Hey, welcome back. So today, or right now, we're gonna keep working on understanding how sound travels through material, just like we were reading about. And we're actually going to use the sim to do this for a little bit. I would have a piece of paper if I were you. If you have your investigation notebook for science, that's great. If not, that's fine too. And so we just read something. Now, what did we discover that sound energy can travel through? Well, we heard uh, earlier, we heard that the mountain bluebird, their song can travel through air. We heard that the sperm whale's click can travel through water. And we heard that the kangaroo rat's foot stomp can be heard through the ground. So it seems like it can travel through a lot of different materials. What we're going to do is we're going to observe the sound energy traveling in the sim. And we have all of these particles. We're going to pick one specific particle, and I'll show you how we can do that in the sim. Now, again, if you have your student notebook, great. You can turn to page 29. If you don't have your notebook, that's fine too. Just grab a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen, and we're going to draw a diagram of what we're seeing when the sound is traveling. So I'm gonna go into the sim. Let's see what instrument we wanna do today. I don't think we've done a drum yet, so we're gonna do a drum. Now I'm gonna pick one of these particles. I'm going to pick this one. So when we're doing this, we can watch that particle move. You know, it's kind of bouncing around. Looks like sometimes it changes direction. And now we're gonna keep an eye on that particle while we play a Hmm. Let's do that again. Ooh, I'm noticing something happening. I wonder if you're gonna notice the same thing as me. Let's do it one more time. Man, it's interesting. So we selected a particle. We turned off the wave. We didn't have the waveform on. We pressed play. Now let's think about what we saw about the particle moving, and we're going to describe it in as much detail as possible. So for me, I'm going to go to this. So I'm going to draw my particle. And then I saw the particle, I saw it do a lot of different things, to be honest. At first, I saw the particle kind of move this way, and then move this way, and then maybe move this way, and then move this way, like at first. But then I saw when we did the drum, I'm not exactly sure how I want to show this, but I saw this particle kind of jump in a line with other particles. So the way I'm going to draw this for myself is I'll draw some other ones. And so again, at first, my particle was just kind of moving around. It looked like it was colliding into some other pieces and changing directions. And then again, once that drum, you're going to see my awesome drumsticks. Once that drum was played, I saw my particle jump in a line with other particles. So maybe you saw something similar, maybe you saw something different. So go ahead and take a second to do a little bit of your drawing. Now, based on our observations in the sim, how do you think sound energy travels from the source, like the drum, to the listener? Like let's say our ear, <clears throat> excuse me, was over here. How is that sound getting from the drum to our ear? We're gonna look one more time at the sim. So I'm gonna play a sound, and I want you to keep an eye on the motion of the particle, or I'm sorry, on the pattern of motion of the particles. We're gonna see if we can identify some patterns that are happening. So let's go ahead and change to, I don't know if we've done a cello yet. 
I'm going to actually pick a different particle, one kind of in the middle, and let's go with the cello. I mean, I saw something similar to the drum, but I this was like even better for me. Let me try that again. Hmm. Man, that's really interesting. So we're going to think about well, what did we observe? with the source of the sound, the sound energy, and the material as we describe what happened. Well, you know what, for this, we're gonna think about what patterns of motion did we notice? And what did we observe about the motion of the highlighted particle? So I'm gonna go back to my drawing and I'm going to type in here. So I noticed that when we played a sound, it seemed like there were lines of particles. Our particle we chose, to me the particle seemed like it moved in the line for a little bit, it got caught in the line and it maybe bumped in, it collided with some other pieces, and then it went back. So our particle that we chose got caught in the line that came from the instrument, and then eventually went back to where it started and kept moving. So yeah, we're noticing a lot of interesting pieces going on here. That sim is pretty cool for showing us what is happening with sounds. So how does sound energy travel through a material? To me, what I'm seeing here is sound sends out some energy. It sends out something and that makes the particles move around and bump into each other. So that is what I'm thinking about, that the energy is traveling through the particles and it seems like it travels through the particles in these lines. And that's what we had in our answer. And now I mentioned that the sim was a really helpful tool as we're working and as marine scientists. And I'm wondering like, why is this model helpful? Why is this a good thing to have? So if you have somebody in the room with you, or you can pause this video and tell them like, why would we use a model? So we use models in science because models help us answer questions and visualize things that are difficult to see. We can't see the particles in the air. I can't see the particles of my couch. Like I can't see all those tiny pieces. But if I use a simulation, if I use a model, that's a way of visualizing the way things in the world work. So that's where we're going to stop for today. We saw some really cool stuff in The Sim. We went through an interesting reading, and we're going to keep going with these ideas tomorrow. I'm excited to see you tomorrow, and I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.